interesting to hear how other people care about it and you're like a dude who mm-hmm. who gets paid for your craft which makes me take you more seriously about your opinions yeah. on things in general yeah, um, um i get i get paid mostly when i do like a off-brand thing because i have two leagues that i really battle with which is dms and king of the dot and the gz platform that they had to come up through the ranks and uh so those are the only two leagues i really care about to be honest like so far like i would i would obviously accept the url battle but uh like when someone else wants me to battle i'm gonna like i take it like it's it's a bigger thing to me than I think most people take it as as an up and comer as an up and coming battle rapper. Um, they sell themselves short and kind of like they'll be like, oh, someone else wants interest in me, like fire, like you know, like someone cares. But like if you build your brand on exclusive leagues to a certain point, well then those small leagues will eventually be willing to pay you a lot more than they would if you were just like this is my second battle. Um, cause when I was coming up in DMS and I had my first three battles and then I did a PY, which is like a, b- before GZ, like I did a GZ battle and, um, I was getting hit up every week, bro. Like more than I ever get hit up now by small leagues and shit, like way more, you know, like a whole bunch of people, yo, come battle this guy in this league. Like, I've never heard of none of this. I was like, bro, fuck this. You know, I was just like, I'm going to be smart. I'm not going to say no, any, yes to any of these. And I only ever did battles on my home league and whatever. So when I finally did start accepting small league battles, they had to pay a, a, an amount that I was satisfied with. And they actually did, bro. So it just goes to show, I guess. That's a big you know, tip still. You know what, yeah. though? I wonder if rappers can learn from that. Because how many of us go perform for free all the time? Exactly, bro. Like, but But music is different. But it's still the same thing. You're right. Like, you have to... What a better lane was, was my boy he used to be SRH. Oh um, my gosh, SRH is legend. Yeah, I grew up with him, right? He's from Valois. Same from word. And shit. Yeah, we went to the same high school and everything. And uh, like that guy would do his own shows. Like he would put on together his own shows where like he was the one making money off of it. You know what I mean? At, at the end of the day, like he would feature artists and he would do like, oh, SRH's album release party with all these people who bring their own people and whatever. He's the one at the end of the day who gets profited off. That's the way to move. You know what I mean? Like this guy made solid albums on his own, built up his name to where he could put out yeah, shows. Man, SRH was whatever putting out music like at a league above like a lot of people. Like, but that's what I'm saying though. That's what exactly what I mean. Like, and then he now, bro, like I told you before, you have to go to the States, bro. If you want your music to blow up, if you want to meet the right people, if you want to be known for anything, you have to go to LA, uh, Atlanta, you have to go to Miami or whatever, any all these places that chicago new york like you have to meet people in these places that push your career you know like you can't just stay here you cannot like it's not gonna pop off like you have to get very very lucky like even drake bro spent a lot of his career in houston uh, memphis or whatever like he has his dad is from fucking he's he, i think he has his american citizenship shit because he's half american and yeah, so, that's yeah, an like, interesting just point on Drake that nobody ever talks about, but you're right. Like, he spent a long time, especially during the Young Money era. In the South, bro. He even he raps about it all the time. I was from the Dirty South. Like, I saw guys in the summer with diamond chains and fucking fur coats, and I was like, holy shit, like, I need to do that. Like, that's why he did, that's why he brought that swag up north, and that's why he's, you know what I mean? It's like, you have to have those connections around mm. North America around the world basically so i, I just want to be clear i agree with you entirely about this connections game yeah. i think every first of all i think everybody has to travel like you can't be yeah, talking man. about like best of anything if you ain't ever seen anything but montreal facts bro facts bro it's just the way it is you know and then like through travel and um i don't know for network me- bro network you have to put money into going out like before i ever got booked on kotd or a ground zero or got given a, a chance to to try out for that league. I went to events in Toronto and met everybody. Mm. I wasn't a weirdo. I didn't That's rap in anybody's tip. ear. I didn't rap in nobody's ear. You know, I, I was cool. I smoked piffs. I was just chilling. You know, I went to watch the battles, scout, see what it's like, see the vibe, uh, apply it to when I finally got my chance. Yeah, uh, I like yeah, the, the see the vibe tip. I saw somebody's performance recently in another city and they didn't understand that it wasn't Montreal and it really hurt them in a, in a competition mm-hmm. setting. And I'm like, Oof, yeah. you got to read the room. That's a big tip. But That's I love what cool. you just said there about doing the homework of... Uh, you have to go on reconnaissance missions, bro. You can't go into something blind. Like 
you can't like even like even Chrome brought it up in our title match. He said uh, you were in the crowd as a fan at DMS 20 no, 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 for Chrome DNA, right? That was the first DMS battle I went to. And like, you know what I mean? Like I had to go see what was good because people were asking me to battle like on that league. So I was like, OK, also, I'll go look at it, you know, whatever. Go to a few events. And I was like, hey, yeah, I could do this shit, you know. And then I did my tryout and I knew the vibe. I knew what I had to bring, you know, to, you know, it's just you have to do that in everything. Like for another example is Chrome had a battle in London, UK, in England. And uh, I happened to be like on a trip out there. So I stopped at the event, you know, and uh, and uh, I saw everyone. It was cool. Like Eddie, I was there. Uh, Gannick was there. Uh, I met all the UK guys. I met, met Shox the Rebel and shit like that. And uh Shox was the owner of that league that 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 the event was being held at, and and I was like, yo, what's good, bro? Like, I'm I'm Machete Trevi, and nah, 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 nah. he's like, yo, I know who you are. Like, why didn't you tell me you were coming? Like, we could have had a battle for you, you know? No, 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 no. And I was like, oh well, bro, I, I don't know you. I'm not gonna hit you up online and and ask for a battle. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, now you know me. Next time you want to book me, like, hit me up, you know? And I was in fucking London, so he was probably like, oh shit. Like now he knows me, you know? So. Next time I'm in London, I, I could have a plate, no problem. Oh, that's like, a big tip, like what that. you're saying. Um, it was a, you have to go on reconnaissance missions, bro. You have to fucking go. You have to go scout before you fucking make your But it's also, like, move. a big tip I learned, um, just doing this, right? Most of the relationships I have with people in Montreal now are super internet-based. Like, the number of people mm -hmm. I've even met in real life that I know versus online is really small. Like, even meeting you for that brief moment... Bro, that takes yeah. you out of like the realms of internet people. Like, yeah. like I've looked in exactly, your eyes bro. for a second, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> and it, it made me realize that like, nah, there is a lot of power in what you're saying, especially if it's business involved. Because like the biggest tip I ever got in life came from Urban Logics. And he came to me and he okay. was telling me about Fat Joe back in the day. And how Fat Joe used to go to everybody's show, even if he hated the person's music, and bring like 50 deep to everybody's show. And then you look at Fat mm -hmm. Joe's legend today and where he's at in the yeah. game and the respect he has. And you think about it. Fat Joe went everywhere, always mm -hmm. was there, always brought people, always showed love. And then the whole world mm -hmm. elevated Fat Joe to like Grammy status and shit. I well, that's, if you want. That's, like, what, that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what New York City was in, in that time, though. You have to understand that, too. You know, like people were outside like that, you know. But like, not everybody in the New York City went to people's music shows they didn't like and showed love, even if they hated it. Yeah, that's them. wild, yeah.